On your right, Toronto. 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 Thank you. Where are you going to? Toronto. Toronto. To your right for Toronto. Hey, right. Goodbye, Where are you going, Lenny? Toronto. Toronto. Where are you going, please? Toronto. Excuse me, we're making a film on the end of the steam locomotive, and we've just been going around asking people. Some people are interested, some people are not interested. You know, if they're sorry to see the steam locomotive go and the diesel come. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? No, I have nothing to say about it. I'm sorry. You couldn't, it doesn't, ma it doesn't make any difference to you what, what pulls well, the train. I think, I think the diesel engine is cleaner. You think it's cleaner? Yes. Do you think people have changed then? I mean, the steam engine belonged to one era and the diesel to another era. Oh, perhaps, perhaps. How, how do you think people have changed? Well, I'm not sure the people have changed. Everything's become more streamlined. Do you think that's for the better or the worse? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? I wouldn't know. No. I think it's a shame. I think that we're losing some of the romance uh, out of the railroad. But what's the romance, the steam locomotive, to you? Well, then? the sound, the, the whistle, the working the steam, the, there's so many different things that uh, enter into it that you don't have it with the diesel. The diesel seems to be something that hasn't got no feeling. It's just a, another mechanical outfit. You like a diesel, better? Oh, yeah. Well, what about you? Oh, I like a diesel, too. Diesel. You? Diesel, too. What do you think of the steam uh, engine, then? Did you have I, a look at it? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, that it's the, the ones with the big wheels, you know? And uh, I think the smoke there and gets in your face, and if you look out the window, and not much fun, you know? Do you think it's old-fashioned, then? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's very old-fashioned. The age of steam in Canada is over. 1955 to 1961, these years mark the end of an era, and the end of all the noises and smells and sights that go with it. The coal dumps and the standpipes associated with the age of steam for more than a hundred years. People of the many railway towns across the country, Kenora, Nakina, Riviere du Loup, Revelstoke, are getting used to new noises. Diesel is more efficient than steam, but some people have mixed feelings about the change. How many years you worked on the railroad then? 1918. About ni 1918? 1918, yeah. So you've seen a lot of changes? Quite a few. What would you like to say about the old steam locomotive? Well, we still like them, all the old timers do, but it's like everything else, changes had to come, and uh, we just got to put up with the changes, that's all. Which would you prefer, steam or diesel? Well, uh, on our own uh, initiative on our trades, we still prefer the steam, but it's like everything else. Uh, it's just the same with the old man that liked the old horse and muggy. He had to finally take over the automobile if he wanted to cooperate with modern competition. What are you going to do when it's all diesel, then? Well, we'll just have to follow on. Let's so all take it up and put our minds into it and follow on the best we can. You'd be sorry to see the steam engine go. Yes, one way. Because we used to work with the steam for many years, you see. Because I worked for the company for 30 years and I used to be work with the steam. But the diesel is, uh, is very good power one way, you see. Because it's very clean and uh, is more... Uh, don't, don't change much, because the old employees still work the same thing, you know. How do you feel about it yourself, just, I mean, for your own interest? Well, I feel, I feel bad, you know, one way, you see, because, uh, I don't know, I can, I can explain much.
their heyday, the old steam engines seemed immortal. To a boy 40 years ago, they were the most powerful thing he knew. 200 tons of steel tugging grain freights a quarter of a mile long across the prairies. Now, on the sidelines. The men call it not a junk heap, but the graveyard, as though they think of the steam engine as something that once was alive. Finally, sold as scrap at $40 a ton, to end up, perhaps, as the railings round a park. years of steam. A million trips out and back home to the roundhouse. Logging trains, work trains, the annual excursion of the Knights of Pythias, the wildflower specials of the old days, the milk runs at dawn. Then each engine maneuvered back into its berth to be ready for another run. Sometimes they came back from epic journeys, from journeys in the mountain passes where they were trapped by avalanches for days. Journeys through summer nights to the seaboard to catch a troop ship. The roundhouse was the place where the stories were told and the legends grew. And in its last days, it is sometimes haunted by those who love the age of steam. The big fascination of an old locomotive like this one. <clears throat> well, the fascination to me is that uh, these things should endure over so long a period. This engine is a very good example of this. It was built in 1872 and it's been around now for what, 85, 87 years. It, it, it has been able to fit itself into uh, modern railway technology. Uh, so long as to become a museum piece. It's Mr. Omer Lavallee of the CPR in Montreal. For a century, his family has been intimately connected with railroading. A photograph taken on his first birthday shows a miniature train circling a cake. It's, uh, it's a bell, a regular old Portland bell here we, uh, we have. Uh, there are people today who have never ridden a train. Uh, I, I, myself, I have, I've met uh, youngsters, teenagers, <clears throat> living today, who have never been on a train, who know a train only as something that ties them up at a crossing. Uh, this is unfortunate. I think that they've missed uh, something. The, they've missed an experience. They've missed becoming acquainted with uh, the prime moving force of civilization. I think that, well, Canada is a very good example. Canada wouldn't be Canada without the railway. I think Canadians don't appreciate at all how much the railway has meant to Canada. Without the railway, Canada wouldn't, I, I don't think Canada would be any more of, a, of an independent member of the Commonwealth than, well, uh, some of the smaller African colonies. When I was 17, I went on the harvester excursion to Winnipeg. Mr. Austin Cross is a well-known columnist with the Ottawa Citizen. Family legend holds that the sight of a steam engine when he was a baby called forth his first spoken word. It was a wonderful world because you went down ahead, you saw them couple on the new engine, saw the old one disappear, and for years and years, um, every divisional point was a must with me. Day or night, I'd get down, watch them uncouple the engine, put the new one on. In the States or in Canada. But that little world of mine's all gone, too. Now, you put an engine on and goes to Vancouver, and who cares what's up ahead? Could be a steamroller, as far as I'm concerned, if it's diesel. 
but there was theme. There was always something interesting, something vital about it. I feel we, have, we had a special era. We had a good century. I didn't live at all, but we had one good century of locomotives, one good century of trains. It's gone now, more or less. And um, I'm one of the last of the old timers, I guess, who still get, gets a kick out of traveling. I know I'm going to Montreal on the 21st. I'm, I'm looking forward to that with some enthusiasm. I'm going up to Pontiac. I'm li riding the last train. The CPR has said that if they could, they put a steam engine on that day. I'm going to Waltham, 81 miles up the line. My wife's going to meet me and going to come back. But I'm going to ride that last train. I ride last... I, I'm... Um, uh, I'm the undertaker in chief to railways around here. I buried the quite. I buried the Prescott line. I buried the Brockville and Westport. I buried. Oh, I don't. Know, I buried the, the the steam train to Barry's Bay. I buried the train from Golden Lake to Pembroke. Whenever the railway needs to be buried, mind you, I would sooner be opening them up. But all right. So I'm a mortician. That's all there's to it. I'm not too interested in the diesel. They seem like uh, sardine cans or something to me. Mr. Eldon Rathburn uh, is a distinguished say, Canadian composer. The numbers, I mean, um, I liken a, a locomotive to a human being. It breathes and it pants and gets old, gets rusty, gets bald. It's like a human being, you know. You, uh, we have setbacks, it goes up the hill and uh, it wheels stop and go back. Sparks come and it gets mad, it grunts, it snorts. It uh, hisses, it belches smoke out, it swears, maybe. A diesel seems to have everything uh, its own way, you know, no struggle. Uh, it's, it's wrong to be sentimental about it because uh, no doubt the diesels are doing a better job or the companies wouldn't have them. They're cheaper, I imagine. But there's something about uh, the steam, the steam engine. It just isn't a passing thing. It seems to be... Uh, Something symbolic about it. It's hard to explain. A lot of people feel this, you know. A lot of different... Uh, these rail fan trips, you see. Uh, people from all walks of life. Women. I, I was out to the Angus shops a couple of years ago watching them. Um, I wasn't watching them. I was peeking through the... Because you're not allowed. I wasn't allowed in. But I watched, seeing the old uh, engines uh, cut in two, you know. And... Um, Maybe I'm a sentimentalist. I would love to take one home with me, but... Uh... One of the last steam doubleheaders made a run from Belleville, Ontario to Bancroft, a little over a hundred miles away. Hundreds of steam fans from Montreal, Toronto, New England came to catch the look of it and even to record the sounds it made.
For almost everyone, there will be sights and sounds from the age of steam that will quicken the memory. But above all, I think, we will remember the smells, the acrid bite of the smoke, the fragrance of pine wood and swamp and countryside mixed with the smell of cinder and soot, and the smell of the coaches, cigar smoke, orange peel, and the indefinable smell of plush. Above all, the passing of the age of steam stirs the memory of men who spent their lives in it. Well, there's nothing more fascinating than sitting in the cab of a locomotive at night, particularly if she's handling a good heavy train. And it's an experience that once you have had it, you'll never forget it. You sit there and look out toward the front and you see the classification lamps, either green or white. As the Mr. Bob Walker of Montreal was a locomotive design engineer with the Canadian National Railway for more than 40 years. The beam of light piercing out into the darkness to the side, and the headlight beam shining ahead probably a half a mile. You look up toward to the stack and there's the stack full of smoke and steam shooting up in the air, at the occasional spark with it, the vibration under your feet, the clatter of the rods, the uh, clicking of the firebox door, and all these things seem you seem to feel that the engine is trying to tell you that she's got a job to do and she's going to do it. And you find yourself unconsciously leaning forward as if you were trying to help her and urge her on. The main thing you had to depend on sometimes were cans of beans. Mr. George Phillips started as a fireman with the CPR in Moose Jaw in 1906. And you could always put a can of beans up on the top of the boiler head to get warm. The only thing was you had to punch a hole in it. Uh, otherwise it might uh, explode and spatter you and scald you and, and uh, spoil the interior of the cab because we used to have to keep them clean. But we used to carry beefsteak, pork chops, bacon, eggs, cook them in the shovel, fry eggs and bacon or beefsteak or pork chops just on an ordinary fire shovel in the fire. Did the engineers have their own locomotives in your day? Uh, yes, yes. They had their own locomotives and they used to take a lot of pride in keeping them up in good shape and things like that. Who had to do the polishing on them? The fireman. The fireman had a polish everything, inside the cab, outside, everything above the running board. And that was, that was quite a job. You did that for nothing. How long did that take? Oh, that would take two hours. When the diesels come along, what were your feeling about the diesels? My feeling about the diesel was that they were a wonderful piece of mechanism, wonderful machine. But uh, they didn't appeal to me half as much as the old steam locomotive did. Did the locomotives vary from one to another then? Oh yes, oh yes. There was none, uh, there were no two alike. One would be actually a good locomotive and you might get one, the same design and everything, that wouldn't be very much good. In other words, she was a misfit. The age of steam left behind it innumerable tall tales and stories that are becoming legends. And, especially in the early days, it gave rise to a lot of homespun poetry, passed on often just by word of mouth. Oh, that is the dying lament of engine 444 in Drawbar Hollow. Well, I don't know it all, but I can remember a little bit of it. And it's added in, now that I am old and dying, in the scrap heap I am lying. Had they but used me half as well as they have used my sister, 
I'd roll along and ring my bell. No mogul ever could go faster. <laughs> what about the uh, what about the engineer arriving at the pearly gates? And that one, I don't know how old that is or where it came from, but uh, I've known it for quite a long time. Uh, a railroad man stood at the pearly gates and his face was scarred and old. He stood before the man of fate for admission to his fold. What have you done, St. Peter asked, to gain admission here? I've been an engineer, he said, for many and many a year. The pearly gates swung open wide as St. Peter touched the bell. Come right inside and choose your heart. You had enough of hell. Was that a favorite one? Well, it, it was a favorite one to me. It uh, always appealed to me in some way. I don't know why. <laughs> Oft when I feel my engine swerve as o'er strange rails we fare, I strain my eyes around the curve for what awaits me there. As swift and free she carries me through yards unknown by night. I look along the line to see that all the lights are white. The blue light marks the crippled car. The green light signals slow. The red light is the danger light. The white light, let her go. Once more the open fields we roam and when the sky is fair, I look up in that starry dome and wonder what's up there. For who can speak? For those who dwell beyond that curving sky, no man has ever lived to tell just what it means to die. Swift towards life terminal I trend. The way seems short tonight. God only knows what's at the end, but I hope the lights are white. The steam locomotive is simple in its elements. Earth, fire, air, water. But by a sort of alchemy, these were wrought into a creature that changed the course of history.
there's something basic in a steam locomotive, something human about it. Uh, I know the locomotive can't speak, you know. It's just symbolic, I think. I think that's where the... It's a machine, but I like to think, you know, that uh, it has a heart, you know, or... I know it hasn't, but <laughs> we, we put it there. Anyway.